the fallen state is amazing. Subscribe now. Don't ever apologize for getting emotional. It just means you are that much closer to what's meaningful. I had a mother who told me constantly how special I was. She would say to me very often, Mijo, my son, you are meant to do great things in this world. The world will know your name. And boy, did that light a fire underneath me. And my goal was to be a famous actor, then the first Polish-Mexican-American president of the United States, and then I was going to end racism. I had this cheerleader. I had this woman, my mom, constantly would dust me off, get rid of my self-doubt, and push me back out there. Welcome to the Father's State. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Today I'm joined by some accomplished entertainers. I have with me Joe Hernandez Kolsky. He is an Emmy Award winning and two time HBO Death Poet. Yep. Thank you for coming, man. My pleasure. Wow, this is going to be fun, I can tell already. <laughs> also, have with me Joshua Silverstein. Steen. Silverstein. <laughs> we went back and forth in the office about this. That's great. Uh, Joshua Silverstein, mm -hmm. an accomplished actor and comic who can be seen weekly on Drop the Mic on TBS. How did you get into entertainment? You're walking down the road and one day you decided. I started acting as a, as a child in a professional theater in Chicago, uh, like when I was like 11 or 12 years old, and really just immediately fell in love with it and went to Princeton University and thought, I need to focus now on my grades, and then was like, oh, look, that's an audition notice. And before I knew it, I continued with theater. And it's just has always been the thing that I've done. Uh, I tried getting in my family. I have a strong political background right. from my family. So I worked briefly at the White House in college uh, doing speech writing. And I just realized that that really wasn't a medium for social change that I, that I thought, I, I didn't think it was the best use of, of, of what I could do. Right. And it wasn't, didn't make me the happiest. Like I love entertaining. I love making people laugh and I love working with this guy and really just trying to push boundaries. Joshua, how did you get into entertainment? My parents, both being activists, I was a lot of, around a lot of um, art that was uh, socially uh, engaged, engaging, and um, found my roots in theater through various theater uh, programs and workshops growing up in LA. Uh, I went to Hamilton High School, which is a very really? big theater yeah. program. And, uh, and went to an art school for college and um, jumped into the spoken word community uh, as I was in college, found my roots there, um, met Joe, and I think it kind of was a uh, bit of a snowball effect of me just being in it all the time, you know. Mm. Um, I grew up at the uh, Agape International Spiritual Center, which also was, uh, was home to lots and lots of entertainers and actors and singers and songwriters, so I was always around art growing up. So Joe, I read that you are half Mexican and half Polish. Yes. That's an amazing mix. Well, not if you're from Chicago. It's about <laughs> as Chicago as you get. Really? Yeah. I actually grew up, strangely enough, in a Mexican-Polish neighborhood. They're the two largest populations in the city of Chicago. Uh, the Polish population outside of Warsaw is the largest. Chicago has the largest right. Polish population. And the Mexican-American population is the third largest migra migration point. There's a lot of us there. When you were growing up, were you attacked by the Mexicans for being mixed? No. Uh, never. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was never attacked by Mexicans. <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, I mean, I had my own insecurities. I definitely felt like I wasn't Latino enough, that there was a certain stereotype to what it means to be Mexican. And then I realized, no, I'm buying into the stereotypes. Yeah. It's not my job to fit into a certain box. That's right. It's, it's the, 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 the box has to be redefined based on what I am. In the black community, if you're mixed, you catch hell, especially in high school. 
I don't know. Well, let's I'm ask him. <laughs> so, Josh, your father's white yeah. and your mother's black. She is. And was that still. difficult for you growing up? Um, no, no, I never, I, you know, I, I hear this construct a lot about, about being, about how, how difficult it is to be multi ethnic, and I never had any challenges with that. Really? Um, no, I was pretty, I mean, you know, I, I came up, again, my dad from the jump was like, my son's black. So, I didn't have any um, identity crises growing up. Um, I wanted to be cool. And I was a nerd, and so my thing was always, what's the coolest version of myself? And so sometimes that meant embracing, you know, pop culture or black culture at the time. And sometimes that meant, uh, hey, right now I like vanilla ice. You know, so it, was, it just depended. You never liked vanilla ice. I, there was a small por uh, part of my life where I was like, Vanilla Ice is the coolest person in, in, on the scene right now, so I want my hair ice, to look ice like baby. Ice Ice Baby, right. and it didn't look like that. But um, <laughs> but I never I never had a what am I, who am I, where do I fit in kind of thing. Um, I That's always good. was like, I just want to be cool. So wherever the cool kids are, white, black, uh, Mexican, I want to be around. <laughs> I want to be around those people. Um, and I, you know, and I'm Jewish, and so you know, the cool thing about being uh, multi-ethnic is I get to be in the room. And no. sometimes I get to have experiences that uh, other black men don't get to experience because they're not biracial. Yeah. I mean, there, yeah, there are people who think, who, who, who get angry that they don't feel a part of either world. And yeah. I, I don't see it that way. I see us as being this bridge between the worlds and our ability to, I, I have tremendous access in many ways. I'm a, I'm a white male who also uh, is Latino. And that allows me to access in different ways. What caused you to feel that you were not Latino enough for a while? I think just imagery and just uh, stereotypes of what it means to be Latino in this country, specifically Mexican, and the stereotypes that surround that. Oh, I see. And then uh, there is a certain uh, political uh, activist uh, mindset that comes out of that that I always wanted to be a part of but felt that I wasn't brown enough, wasn't from California or Texas, or speak Spanish perfectly. And I, those are my insecurities and I continue to work at them. Right. But like, You Span still have them? Um, I think I'll always have them. I mean, really? I, think, I think they'll change over the years, oh, okay. but I think who I am will always, I'll walk into certain spaces and maybe not feel like the most comfortable or whatever, but I think there's something to that. I think we, we gain something from that. I don't yeah. think there's a coincidence that sometimes uh, those who are struggling with their identity find themselves focusing more on, on, on those issues, you know, do being you, poli politically active. Do you think it's a mistake that interracial dating and marriage and making babies happens because a lot of people who are interracially mixed they don't feel that they fit in anywhere. I no, hear that a whole lot. Not at all. Do you think it's a mistake to interracially mix in that way? No, I think. It, I mean, I think in the end, it's it's up to each individual who they fall in love with. But I would never be like, we shouldn't do this. How, do you, how, you feel the same way? Justin? Yeah, I mean, I would not want to not exist. So I feel like. Uh, <laughs> so I, I'm very grateful that my parents went against the grain and and did the do and had me. But I think um, I think that uh, you know I, I think identity crisis is a is it's something that people experience no matter what they are. I mean, I struggled yeah. with my own um, identity as a male more than I had issues with race. You know, I had to figure out like what kind of man I was growing up. You know, I, I was a sensitive, caring, compassionate man, and that didn't fly when I was a kid. And well, that sounds like a perfect segue in, in the to 80s discussing and 90s. masculinity. Yeah, in America. like that was my thing. But but racially, you know, I mean, I had kids who definitely were programmed to think black was A, B, and C. Yeah. And so if I didn't fit in that realm, they were like, well, then you're not black like I'm black. But I've always felt that I am um, redefining what it means to be black in America. You know, we have this weird issue uh, with. Um, the monolith, right? The black monolith. Yeah. And people saying the black experience, the black experience. And I always say, like, well, the black experience is still happening. It's still unfolding. Like, the, the being black didn't just stop, right? So we're all, so as a black man, I am adding to the black experience. I'm surprised that you, maybe because you were over at Hamilton High, but mm -hmm. that you didn't get beat up because you sound white, you act white, yeah. and black kids. Would be would hate you. I mean, well, they, you know, would, uh, I, I remember they would being like beat you up every day. I mean, I, don't, I, don't I remember being yeah. a kid, and I remember um, uh, um, 
you know, uh, again, wearing the uh, the facade of what it meant to be cool at the time, and this is like the early 90s, and so what does that mean? You know, so baggy pants, right? Yeah. Baggy pants, big shirts, uh, and that was my way of, of trying to fit in, and it didn't look good on me. It, did, it didn't, it wasn't a my authentic right. experience. And so some people like, like the white guy trying to be black. Well, it wasn't like the white guy trying to be black, it was like, those pants don't fit you <laughs> clearly, yeah. you know? And, uh, and my parents weren't into it. They are like, don't wear those clothes. So I, I, I got even bigger pants, right? So I was just a walking swatch of color, you know, and fabric. As far as um, acting white and, and, and talking white, I don't know, man. I've always felt that um, uh, black is intelligence, black is, you know, uh, strong, black is, proper English and grammar. I don't know that the black experience is watered down to Ebonics or street right. or, so I think that I speak like me yeah. and I speak like an educated person, because I am, but that, that also doesn't mean that, that people who do speak with um, certain vernaculars are not educated. So I don't, I don't subscribe to the whole talk white, act white thing. I kind of fight that a little bit because I Good. don't know what that means. Yeah, we both have had very interesting experiences. Like my, I, my high school experience, I went to a predominantly black high school in Chicago where there wasn't, I never felt any uncomfortability or anything. I felt, uh, I mean, I, it was the same high school that Michelle Obama went to and it was, a, it was we were the cream of the crop. It was uh, some of the best. It was the best public school in the city of Chicago, and as a child, I my whole experience uh, was really funneled through that. And I never, I never, never once Did you felt. You grow any up on the south side of Chicago. No, I grew up on the northwest side. Oh, I see. Um, see and well, so, no wonder. And so my, but my school was on the west side. Oh, I see. And so let me ask, um, are, are you Catholic? Are you a Christian? Dude, I'm hyper Catholic because oh. I'm Polish and Mexican, which right. makes me like super Catholic. <laughs> uh, how about you? You're Jewish? I'm Jewish, but not practicing. Oh, really? Yeah. So you, if you, could you be a Christian? Uh, I couldn't be. I, I, I'm, I'm more of an agnostic person than a, than a specific uh, And why is that? Religion. Why am I agnostic? Yes. Um, I don't know. That, that kind of works for me. Um, I feel like uh, I grew up very spiritual and um, you know, and, and uh, believing in God and, and, and um, meditating and praying. And I think that where I've landed as what feels the most authentic for me as far as my belief systems, feels like I'm in control of my life. And um, instead of God, instead of, instead of any, any exterior entity that is, you know, pulling the strings. And I so feel like. So it mean that you believe there is a God, you just don't believe in him. I believe that maybe there's something, but I also don't know. So, I, so agnostic for me means um, for right now, uh, I am responsible for my own life, but maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> And <laughs> uh, what is a man? What is a man? That's quite a... Well, I think, uh, I think what is it, the, the uh, X chromosome? X Other X than the physical parts of a man, what is a man? I don't think there is one single definition. I think there are 4.5 billion different men in this country, yeah. and they all have their own definition. It's a pretty amazing thing. Like, in the poetry world, there's this, there's this one poet who, you know, when you start drinking the haterade, uh, I was reading her bio once and it said, she sees the world through a different pair of eyes. And I'm like, mm, we all do. Yeah. Like, so in the end, describing what being a man is in masculinity, I can tell you what my definition is. Yeah, what are you, my you definition. Know, what is a man and are you a man? Absolutely. You are a man, so what is a man so in your opinion? My definition is, is I have always, I grew up in a space attempting to always achieve balance. Uh, between what is defined in larger terms as the feminine and the masculine. Uh, I was raised in a house where you were not afraid to be, to be uh, uh, you were never afraid of your emotions, uh, but I was also raised to be very chivalrous and be protective. And you protect a woman not because she's weak, but because she's important. So I've always had that in my life. So I grew up being the best friend of the girls, like I was always like, I just hung out with girls and like from the age of 10 when all the boys were roughhousing outside and all the girls were inside dancing on the dance floor, I was like, that's where I want to be. Wow. And so, you know, I grew Amazing. up. Amazing. Well, what? Amazing. 
I mean, that's just... So you, uh, do you identify more with the female rather than the male? Well, it's interesting. I think I've gone through phases in my life where I was the one boy in the dance class, I was the one boy in the yoga class, and as somebody who is preparing to be someone's husband and someone's father, I, uh, I gravitated to boxing as a, as, a, as a form of expression for me right. because it, I felt balanced out uh, who I am. I feel what different. What caused you to become so emotional? As a young person? Um, I think we are all emotional, and I think some of us are just taught not to embrace it, and I think that's dangerous, and I think it comes out in unhealthy ways then. So I was always taught that never be, it's never wrong to, to cry. And Who it, taught you that? Uh, my mom and my really? dad, yeah. Did your father know that your mother was teaching you to be emotional and play with sure. the dance with the girls? Yeah, the, everything that I became, <laughs> they these were choices that they made together. Why did he allow her to teach you that? Because it, because he came from a, an unemotional family and it wasn't healthy for him. Oh, I see. So yeah, I grew up, my grandparents were alcoholics and did not know how to express their emotions and because of that, uh, I think my you know, I think there was some, some growth that did not occur. So are you married? No. And have you dated? Yeah. <laughs> so when you date <laughs> women, do they resent you for being like them, emotional like a woman? No, because I'm, I don't think I'm emotional like a woman. I think I'm emotional like a man. I'm well, emotional like I am. But real men are not emotional. Yeah, that's where I think we're going to disagree. Why? Because first of all, the definition of what is a real man, we're real by the fact that we exist. There is no definition of what it means to be real. And I think there are different, different, different definitions for every single person. But if you are emotional and your girlfriend is emotional, when she is emotional, how do you help her? If you're feeling I think, the, I if think you're there's a balance that occurs. That she's feeling. I think there's a balance that occurs. I think we, we, be, we, we can become the rock when the person needs that and but vice how? versa. If you're emotional, you can't be a rock. Uh, I think what your definition of emotional is may be different than mine. Uh, what's yours? Mine means like being connected to what affects you and not being afraid of that. So uh, I, don't, I don't run away from that, but at the same time, when I need to be the rock, I'll be that. One last thing about that. So when you were growing up, the boys would be outside playing. The girls would be inside dancing. Yeah, I had all the 13-year-old girls on lock. <laughs> <laughs> and that was something. I was 10 you. years old. I had no idea what to do with them. But and, and there was something in, within you that said, "Hey, I'd rather be dancing with the girls than playing outside." Yeah, yeah. because the girls loved to dance with Joey Kolsky. Because <laughs> I would do my little footloose dance move, and they just and fell in love crazy. with me. You still dance? Oh God, yeah. Very. Let me see you cut loose. <laughs> I'm not gonna cut loose right now. And now, a word from our sponsor. Hello, everybody. Troll your liberal fabric members by getting them our brand new Fallen State t-shirts. On the front, it says, The Fallen State. On the back, it says, That's amazing. And don't forget our coffee mugs. The front, The Fallen State. The back, Did You Have Fun? And don't forget my book, The Antidote, Healing America from the Poison of Hate, Blame, and Victimhood. You can... Out of here. You can go to the Fall of State TV and order now. Joshua, uh, yeah. other than the physical part of the male, what is a man? Well, I mean, look, um, gender is a construct, right? Gender is a construct that was created to create power, right? And we have bought into the construct because it makes a lot of men feel comfortable. Yeah. I think part of the issue with what is a man is you create this rigid definition and then you uh, push away anybody that doesn't fit into that construct. So for me, as a father, as a, as, a, as a man in a relationship, I think what a man is is to be human. And I think that what I'm teaching my children is to uh, not be afraid of accessing their feelings and emotions, of uh, being responsible, of caring for their family. And these are things that I am hoping that my kids grab onto as morals and values, but I don't know that that defines a man in the broad sense, but it defines me. You have children? I have two kids. Boys or girls? A boy and a girl. Really? And are you married? I have a fiance, we're not married yet. Really? Yeah. 
Um, and so you're teaching your boys and girls to be emotional, no, your boy and your daughter to I don't think what? teaching someone to be emotional is the accurate uh, way of saying it. I'm teaching them to have access to their feelings. Now, there's, now feelings and emotions are different, right? I can have an emotion about uh, seeing a movie, and I can go, oh, this, this, this movie is making me feel sad. And I think that's, in, and, and I can go, well, that's fine. There isn't anything wrong with you watching something and making, it, making you feel something. But I'm not teaching my kids to be irrational. And what that means is you can have emotions, but you can't let those emotions govern your reality, right? So teaching my son to go, hey, listen, if you feel bad about something that someone said to you, that's fine. And, that's, and it's okay to express that you feel bad. But you can't let that emotion dictate every action you're going to take from, from then on out. And so, but if you're into emotions, how would you prevent your emotions from dictating things if you're into Well, that? that's a great question. It's about being responsible, right? So being human means, all right, I feel this way, but I'm in control of my life. I'm in control of my actions and how I express. So, you know, Joe and I work together a lot, and Joe and I, it's art, and art is, by, by the very sense of the word, emotional. There's emotions in art. Our job as artists is to have access to what we feel, right? right? And Joe can have a feeling that creates an emotion in him, and he can express that emotion. And I know that it's my job as his partner, as, as, as working with Joe, to go, all right, that's how my friend feels. He's expressing his emotion. But also, I know that I can't let that experience affect me to where I become irrational. Yeah. So there's space for emotion. So do you tell Joe to cut it out? Uh, what, not in those what, words. Like, cut out all that mess. No. Well, well, like a man. Well, we've learned how to accept that we're both, very, up. we're both very passionate about what we believe in. Right. And so when we get into the creative writing room, we both have opinions and we, we really like we, we, we hash it out, which is, I think, a pretty amazing, I think it's pretty powerful what we do. The fact that we've dedicated our lives to, to, to navigating what's going on inside mm, of us right. in hopes that other people will identify with the experience. So many people, men and women, do not have access to their emotions and their feelings, and you see it acting out in today's culture. You have people who are running into relationships that are, not, that are toxic and, and unhealthy because they don't know how to access their emotions. You have um, people in power who are freaking out because all of a sudden they're feeling things and they don't know how to deal with it. So I think being in a place of these are my feelings, these are my emotions is fine. Being emotional often kind of correlates, I think, with being irrational. And so I don't, th I don't think emotions are irrational. They may not be real. They may not be, um, you may have an emotion that's based on ignorance or an emotion that's based on uh, a feeling that's not actually happening, but I don't think the having of emotions is a, is a negative thing. I think being able to it experience off? it and being able to express it healthy is fine. You said that gender is a construct. Yeah. What do you mean by construct? Construct meaning that it is man-made, meaning that there's no scientific proof that it exists, except for the <laughs> rehearsal of it in our society. Yeah. For so example, is God made is man-made. We're well, talking to an agnostic, right. <laughs> so 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 I don't know that God made gender, right? Because but he did. He made man man and made woman for man. But let me ask you this. Yeah. But well, um, hold on. Let's go to that. So if God made man and woman, right? right. Talking about a, 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 a powerful, omnipotent being yes. who created from its own image and likeness a, a, a man and then a woman, correct? From it, the man. From the man, from the rib, right. right? From that experience, was there a breakdown as to the ingredients of the male and female? Yes. There was. Yes. Is that in the text? Yes. Okay, well, I, didn't, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but, so let me ask, is your father, is your, uh, Joshua, is yeah. your father an emotional man? My father is a man who definitely has access to his feelings, if that's what you're asking me. Right. So, so does that mean, yes, he is an emotional man? Well, I still am not sure that yeah. we, we have a the similar to, the, um, uh, I think when you think emotional, you think irrational. And so I'm not quite sure we're on the same page as what emotions mean. <laughs> so if you think my father's irrational, no. My father definitely has feelings and is sensitive when it comes to certain experiences, but I don't think my father's an emotional person. Let me ask, have you seen the movie Inside Out? No. 
Yeah, he wouldn't. So like let it. me ask you: <laughs> Is your father? Because when that rocket went up, I just want to know if if a tear came out of your eye. That's all I want to know. Have you seen Bambi? No. You ever seen Bambi? No. Have you ever seen a cartoon movie before in your life? Have I ever seen one? Yeah. Yeah. Give me give me a cartoon movie you've seen. Uh, Pop out of Sailor Man. Well, that's a TV sh cartoon, but how about oh. like a movie? Oh, uh, I don't. Go you've to never to see in your cartoon. entire life you've no. never seen. Well, you're right. missing a lot of art out there. But right. I'm just not into. Or like cartoons Finding like Nemo, like when but, the little tortoise falls off, and then you're worried that it's not going to make it do you, back. Do you, do you like, have kids? You can't help yes. it. Have like, you taken your kids to see a, a, a film that was animated? No. So you've not taken your children. A man what about has Coco? not taken his children to see a movie? No. <laughs> so let me ask, uh, why is it that, I'm like stunned listening to you guys right now, yeah. <laughs> about uh, okay, it's okay for men to be emotional. I yeah. never, growing up, yeah. I never thought I would see the day when I would hear men agreeing to become like a woman. Well, look, that, again, than to be as a, a, as a black man. Let me ask this, yeah. let me ask this. Yeah. Why is it that in society today, there are people who are trying to destroy masculinity but not destroy uh, women. Well, let me, let me, They've tried to turn men into women, but not women let, into Let's men. go to that question. Why because is that? It's a great question. First of all, have you noticed that? Um, I think I understand what you're saying, so but you I, dis noticed? I disagree with the way you're, you're phrasing you've it. you've noticed this happening, right? I notice what's happening is people are breaking down the construct. And so, you know, you look at well, slavery. why are they turning men into girls? Well, you look at slavery, and I don't know who they is, but you look at slavery. <laughs> the man hated it, feminists and weak men and, well, well, feminists and the media are just, and stuff like that. So look, why look, are they turning... Let's, let's go back to... Why are they to, turning men into girls and why are men accepting it? Let's I go, would never want to be a girl. Right. Well, you're missing out. Why but let me... Let, and what so, about miss? I mean, all that emotion we, and stuff is not good. Well, women are awesome, but I, but I also feel like awesome? so awesome, awesome. Like, In what way? How are women how awesome? Are women yeah. awesome? Yeah. If you have to ask that oh. question, so I don't you. know what else to tell you. <laughs> how are they awesome? How are women awesome? I mean, I mean, we can first of all talk well, about. Let me, let me so let me, go. Okay, so let's. Okay, so if we have a society of nothing but dudes. Does that oh. sound like a society you want to live in? Oh. Are women awesome? Well, that's, that's the answer to your question. That doesn't answer my question. It does because no. because if by by nature. Are you saying they are awesome simply because they're on Earth and they're women? Uh, that's that's one we'll of the ways. Start there, they, sure. Yeah, like really? they, the fact that they exist that's all it takes is for a woman? amazing. Yeah, a woman. Have you have ever to, seen? The, I, well, no, no, a I'm woman doesn't have to there. do much but you to didn't be tell awesome. Me, yeah, how is she by, awesome? Well, by the fact that she gets to exist and and express. Just by that is a is a, an amazing thing. Like, I think, I, but I do think that there's something to be. But I think there's something to be said for the difficulties that uh, that women have overcome. The same way, I, I, in my opinion, the African American community has overcome certain subjugation. I think it speaks to the strength of the human spirit. And I think in the end, we are seven billion individuals, regardless of male or female. And when you put them under pressure, we know the old metaphor of you take a piece of coal and you put enough pressure on it, you have a diamond. I think that's very important. Are you when, saying that women don't buckle under pressure? I think women have had to or, come, overcome a lot. Do they buckle under pressure? No. I yes, think people do. buckle no, under I pressure. No, yes, I think some people that have absolutely difficulties. Absolutely not true. You don't oh. think men buckle under pressure? I think Weak men do. Weak I think men. Emotional men, men do. I think but men, not real men. No, emotional. I think real men. Real men, men you're overcome the pressure. Weak men buckle under pressure like a woman would do. No, but I think that's the same can be said for, women, for, for, for strong women and weak women. And I think we all are overcoming our different different. You, do you believe women are awesome as well? Absolutely. <laughs> and what's awesome about them? Uh, in my life, my life is gr has been radically improved by every woman I've ever had come into my life. That's so sad. How why is that why sad? That sad? That's like just sad. <laughs> okay, so my mother is an uh, what educator. What has happened to manhood? I mean, my mother is so, an educator who has brought young people throughout throughout over thirty years to travel overseas. She's changed people's lives just through teaching. She 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 was my mom, so I learned about who I was through her experience. She endured so much, so I could be where I am. I mean, look, the fact that I get to. Uh, be in this city is because of my mom, right? So not we, because of your now, father. Now, 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 because of both of them. Now, what? How? What? Who do you worship more, your father? Or your I mother? don't worship my anything. Not like you worship <laughs> your mother. I think I'm grateful for my mom, but worship uh, to me feels like. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, o o o over the existence I don't worship of my others. Mom. Like, if anybody worships his mom, it would be me. And I don't worship my mom. She was a fallible human being, but she. Who I am is is 
You, are you just like your mother? Uh, in certain ways I am, but in other ways I'm like my father. Um, who was your mom? Amazing. Wait, who was your well, mom? At, who, was, who was your mom? Uh, uh, Katie Peterson. What did, what, what did she do for a living? She was a housewife. She was, and, and, and yeah. were you around her often? Or? Not a lot. No, he was, no, I was raised by my grandma. grandparents. Okay, yeah. so your grandmother was yes. around. Was she, was, how, what was she like? She was a good, hardworking, decent woman. Yeah. But not awesome. She wasn't awesome. No. There was no uh, awe about the work she did. In those days, women were noble women. Right. And they but nobility has a certain awe to it, right? They understood the order of life, and they understood the order of men and women. They wouldn't even want you to call them awesome yeah. because they understood the, art, uh, the order of life. And now you have these weak women and weak men right. who they're into the awesome because they're trying to make up for something that was lost. And what was lost? Love, strength, the right. men are weak, so the women are weak. But isn't, and now you got to pretend that they're awesome. But isn't love an emotion? No. Love's not an emotion. That fallen state love is the yeah. one that when you have anger, you yeah. have anger. I do have anger. And you have anger? Mm -hmm. That's why you think that women are awesome. Because I have anger? Because you become like your mother, you're in a fallen state. So you feel and think like women. So hold on, so, if you're in a, so when you're in a fallen state, you feel like a woman, and a woman, a women, a women are weak, and they are weak because why again? Because the men are weak. Their fathers are weak. So, the men, so we're the living in a society day. full of Listen women. Listen to that Joe. Joe's like, wow, I learned so much from, yeah. from the women. They may, but you didn't learn life. anything from your grandmother. I did. So you learned something. Right, but not. I'm not into just learning from women the way Joe is. But but it sounds like you're sharing a similar experience to what he's sharing, which is no. you had a woman in your life who taught you things. By example. Right, yeah. but that's still learning. But she taught nobility. She didn't teach me to be a woman. But she taught you how to be noble like a woman. No, noble like a man. So, it's your, so a and woman the, and the taught you how that, to be noble like a man. The reason that she so was noble on, because she respected my grandfather. He was noble. So the and woman... So the, she got her, so, so as long she got as the her woman, life from him. Okay, so as long as the woman knows her place, I gotta, we're good. Is that, what do you mean by her place? Well, you keep talking about the... the she the, knew where she was the, as a woman. And yeah. Right. But so, so you learned... Is there something wrong with that? Well, I'm just trying to figure it out. You <laughs> learned how to be a man. Is there man. something wrong with knowing your place as Absolutely, a woman? Absolutely, because that, wrong, that place is think, being redefined. Well, I think place think in that, that... I think place is also a very interesting word because when you say place, do you mean path? Or you mean like... Give me a yes or no first. Do you think... Well, I can't give you yes or no. There is something answer wrong the with a woman knowing her place. I think if she feels like that is her role in life and that's what makes her happy, I don't think there's a problem with and that. And you think there's a problem? I mean, I think, it's, I think it's the woman's choice. Yeah, whatever she decides her place Amazing. is. Like, uh, do you think men are awesome as well? Yes. I think, I think we're fallible human beings who are adjusting and... Fallible meaning what? We're redefining how the world exists. White males are not the only people in power, or shouldn't be. Why not? Because it's, it's, a, it's a very... It's a nepotistic form of power that nine times out of ten isn't gained through hardship and, and work. But how are you going to decide that white men I'm not. should not <clears throat> be the only one in power? That's not Power my... is not something that someone gives you. Power is something that comes out of you, and no human being can decide oh, in this who's country? going to be in power or not. In this country, nepotism, and I, I've, I've seen when I went away to college and I, you know, I could be very easily the poster child for affirmative action, um, I saw many legacy grad students who were accepted based on who their parents were. So, well, blacks do that too. You uh, can go to the average black college right now and if your parents weren't there and graduated from there, you could get in. Correct. Based and I don't, on the fact that your parents correct. weren't there. So and what's I wrong with I white people doing it? I don't challenge legacies as, as a way but I also want it to be ex exemplified when people try to attack affirmative action. I want to move a little further here. Do you, first, do you agree with me that if it wasn't for white people, there would be no America? I mean, I think it's a combination of so many different people. But how about that, though? Because, that white, because people of white people founded, white people started, white people keep it running. No, I don't agree with that. Do Not, you agree with that? 
and that white people came here, enslaved a bunch of people, created genocide. And then said, look what I did. Look what I did. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> white people totally did that. And that's America, absolutely. But they do that in Africa, too. Blacks sell what, who blacks, does? Uh, enslave other blacks. Sure, humanity's they flawed. They use blacks for money as one, other blacks. Yeah, and everybody slaves everybody. Financial yeah, but, the, but let me ask this. If white people become the major, minority, minority oh, in this country, are. We're white having people. babies like crazy. Uh, are you happy about that? Um, I think in the end it depends. This is the issue that I wanted to make sure we addressed here today. Well, answer that first. Are you happy about that? No. I'm not, I'm not happy with the, any subjugation of any population. Do both of you agree that if white people become the minority in the United States of America, that the United States of America will become a ghetto? A ghetto? First of all, yeah. you mean you mean a place where where uh, ingenuity, ingenuity comes out of poverty? Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean a place where that's what guess where what, normal that's people what have to go means, to though. the moon to live. Because if you notice, you got people of color coming into our country, right? Right. And all they're doing is turning it into the environment that they left. They turn it do you into know, a ghetto. Do you know Windsor Hill? Dude, very, have, you seen, have you seen half of the DACA recipients that are being attacked? They're some of the smartest kids ever. No, I, I mean, yeah, in that they're joining the And which is why they're trying, which is why Trump is trying to push them out, because he knows, no, 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 he knows joining, these are intelligent Latinos who will not vote not for it. his party. That's not it. He knows that they're here illegally. They should not be here. And that they're joining MS-13 gangs. They're taking advantage oh. of our social no. services. That's, that's inaccurate. They are hating America. They fly the Mexican flag. So and wait, so I'm just, just curious normal about... Normal people don't want them here. No, so you that's inaccurate. want the illegals here? Y yeah, of course. Um, but they're hurting blacks first and foremost. How are they hurting blacks? They're going into the hood and they hate the blacks. So wait, the, 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 over wait hold on, just so I understand this without... <laughs> so the immigrants are coming over here and they're hurting the blacks? Yes. Wow. <laughs> they are uh, fighting with them. They hate the blacks. And who are the immigrants? You mean the Canadians? The illegal aliens. So the Canadians no. are coming. Well, they're also. The, the Canadians these, not moving. So the, the French. Are French the Mexicans and the, uh, the Where are the French moving? And all those people. Are the well, French let's stay with that point. Because the Mexicans. Of time. So the Joes are coming over here and they're. And Just they're, half of me. Okay. So half of Joes right. are coming over here and hurting, and hurting half of me. Okay. You're not aware of that? Are you aware of that, Joe? It's inaccurate. It's no, not. It's uh, uh, a, a, a large Go over percentage to of. High so, so my. Fiance, go to Hawthorne High so, School. So just so I understand, go to Manuel my, High School. You will see what's going on. So my fiance, go to Compton, California. My fiance is Mexican. In regards my to that issue, my fiance is Mexican. She did. She was the. Well, she no came over wonder here. No you dated a Mexican. I you didn't cannot, just date. I'm gonna marry her. And especially being emotional. Have you seen you his fiance? Tell the truth. <laughs> so so she, she came a, over here. She's, she's awesome. awesome. She, she's amazing. She's, she's awesome. She's also awesome. the department yeah. head of uh, the Brain and Neurology Institute at USC. I bet you're afraid to tell her the truth about. How they are affecting our country in a negative way. I don't know that I believe yeah, that. Yeah, I don't agree with I don't that. Think well, you're true. not paying attention. What, I think you feel that. I work with these people every so, day in the hood. So, we, you do? Uh huh. Who are these people? And, and a lot of blacks have moved back south mm -hmm. to Georgia and Alabama because, because of the they're Mexicans. not feeling safe. Yeah. Again. Mm -hmm. And in Mexico, Again, black these... people are the underclass. As a matter of fact, they just deported some blacks from Mexico yeah. because they were black. Mr. Peterson, the true issue, I believe, is the disparity of wealth. No. I think people are fighting for crumbs of a pie that is a very small percentage, while the people who continue to encourage you and say, yay, he's speaking the truth, are people that are making a tremendous amount of money off of all of us. Well, anyone can make money if they work hard, discipline themselves. I, I, I disagree with that. I know black that. people who are doing it every day. I, but you I said think there that are some black examples. people are not and, doing and the well. The reason that blacks are not, most, not all, not all, but most blacks are not doing well because they're coming from one-parent homes, mm -hmm. and these mothers don't know how to guide them in the right way. Right. But I want to move to Kanye West because of time. Let's okay, do it. Sure. Let's uh, do it with Kanye West. <laughs> Kanye uh, has been speaking, speaking out in a major way lately. You guys heard about that. Oh right? yeah, he's speaking oh, out. He loved the way. president. Yeah. He wants blacks to not spend the next 400 years enslaved. Sure. As they did the last 400 years. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about that? I think Kanye needs to be on his medication. Really? Yeah. He's, and why? Well, because he's he's not taking his medication like he should be. He even said so. Is he saying anything that's not true? Yeah, uh, I don't think, yeah. I think everything he's saying <laughs> everything. is not true. Like what? <laughs> well, that slavery was a choice? Yeah. What, he, he cleared that up for you by saying that uh, in order for blacks to stay enslaved for 400 years, they had to be physically enslaved 
as well as mentally enslaved. Right. And so he doesn't want them to spend another 400 years mentally enslaved. Sure. Okay, so they'll be in control by the so, Democrats so and if, the so if every Do you agree with that? So, if I, so I understand that there's something to be said for, you, you're always going to find what you're looking for. And I, and I believe that. And I believe if, you, if, if Mr. Peterson continues to search for examples of whites being taken advantage of by blacks, you're going to continue to find that. However, you don't have to look very hard. See, but I think you do, because I think there are more examples of and very legitimate versions of where uh, voter disenfranchisement has occurred throughout There's the no years. Proof of that. Redistricting. Tons of proof no, of no. That. It's Absolutely. easy said, but not proven. You have to realize the children of the lie. The Democrats and the so, right okay. old, they oh. just throw out lies and you guys believe the lies. So, so, you, you, do so you think that there is some radical conspiracy that you have insight into that the rest of the world doesn't? That you've, I, I that you've taken the red pill in the matrix? Mm -hmm. so you pay attention to what? What's happening around me and in my world. Through, through how do you... Explain this to me, both of you. Yeah. I grew up on a plantation in yes. Alabama under the Jim Midway, Alabama. Laws. Right. Mm -hmm. And you did your homework, mm -hmm. nice. Mm -hmm. And blacks were better off when it came to morality and work, and they bought land, and they bought houses. They educated themselves under that law while the law was there. Mm -hmm. Why were blacks able to do better then and not complaining, not blaming the white man? They knew it was the democratic government that had passed this law to restrict blacks as far as where they can live and stuff. Why weren't blacks complaining then as opposed to now, when they can do whatever they want, whatever they want. But they were complaining. Why weren't they? No, they weren't. They were complaining. No, because no, they no. were lynched. I was there. <laughs> because the minute no. they complained, they were lynched. That's not true. So there was no lynching at that time? No, it was happening somewhere, but not in Alabama where I was. I'm mm. sure you could find some. But why were blacks not complaining then? So what's well, the... they had good lives and better lives. I, then did they do now? As far as I know, and from, from, from my research that I've done, they were complaining. You've been what's the, what's the, the school... population of black people that were, in, that were in your area that you were a part of? I, I, I was too young to think about population, but... Okay, so major population. So, like, talking you know, about how you, many people? I, I have no so idea. So, give me. So, you as so a child were it. you as a child were able to observe that everybody was happy. Yes. But now, you also said that you were don't not know. Going to jail for the most part, you know. But, how, but wait, there were no gang violence. I just want to understand that the, only started when blacks left the south and moved to the north, and they got in on welfare. They started depending on Jesse Jackson and others. Mm -hmm. They stopped as Kanye West want them to do. They stopped being free thinkers. I mean, I don't, I've, this has always been a challenging point when we deal with this issue is, as I said earlier, you're gonna find what you're looking for. And there is a certain amount where, you know, how do we, how do we break the mindset uh, of victimization per yeah. se? But they are victims. They, uh, no. They, there's They're not there are, to the white system. But there are so many examples. Homes. But also, you have to, again, like going back to uh, slavery, it was an institution that was, you people were mentally enslaved. Our current prison and, system. And, and, and still are mentally enslaved. And even yes. then, they were better off then than they are today. Because so, but they you're, were more But you're talking about a trickle-down effect. So you they got, were not bitching and complaining about the white man not giving them anything. Sure. But how they many? Be I, I think that's a fallacy. You even have I, the men complaining. Oh, the white man won't give me some more permanent. Right. Who is this and the person? Men should be yeah, I, don't know I, I know so many about. countless African American you men. You don't know black men. Oh, honey, about I got racism. a lot of black friends who you, you are my dearest, dearest about homies. Racism. Oh, I think. Oh, honey, about I got racism. a lot of black friends who you, you are my dearest, about dearest about homies. Hope. I think. We complain about racism because it's real, but I don't think we use racism as a tool for not doing what we need to get done. Well, how is racism I, real? How, how is it real? Yeah. It, it's, Where's your proof that it's real? Um, Where is it real? It just happened. I mean, Philadelphia is, 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 a, is a perfect example of how racism what? is real. In Philadelphia, where these black men were arrested by the police because they were just in Starbucks, that's a real example well, of racism. Well, that's not true, though. What do you mean, it's not true? They were not arrested because they were in Starbucks. Why were they arrested? They were arrested because they would not leave. They just sat there and sat there. The manager right. asked them to leave. And where is they it? They would not leave. 
and the cops came and asked them to leave. Right. They would not leave, so they were arrested. So why were, they asked, why were they asked to leave? Because though? they were not buying anything. They just sat there for hours. Now you don't, and you, you can't come into my business and just sit there and don't buy anything. Yeah, but they were waiting that happens, for their have friend. Have you ever been no, to a Starbucks? They were not waiting. They, but their friend showed up. And that's all lies. It's, it's all no. horrible. I don't know if okay, so this is up, these. I, the, they, the, the, but my point is, they were not arrested because they were just sitting in Starbucks. Okay, so okay. so here's an example. Okay, so at, at, at Hamilton High School, they used to have these things called truancy tickets. Okay, right. now you know what those are. Being late for class or something. Right. Yeah. So the, the police would drive around the neighborhood and arrest kids who were not in school during school hours. Right. And so I, a young black kid, was arrested countless times right. for trying to get to class on time while the cops would drive around looking for more kids. Now, we always drove past white kids. We didn't pick them up. So I maybe that's a just a random occurrence, but it happened so much, it's hard to ignore the fact. Are you saying that's an example of racism? Absolutely. Yeah, what they were talking. That is they, not an example of what's racism. It, what's it an example I of? I counsel with some of those kids from, from that school, okay. as I do other schools. But what's it an example of? They come of? from one-parent homes. Yeah, they, but, don't, oh, they don't but obey that's the not teachers. About, They're not into class, and because black people have not corrected their children. So wait, wait, just so I understand. Have to, sometimes the good have to, have to suffer with the bad. So the cops are picking up only the black kids and the brown kids because avoiding every, the white kids. That is not, them that's what do you that. think racism is? It doesn't exist. Well, okay, so if it There's does exist, what, is it, what does it mean? It doesn't exist. So, okay, so you, but you're saying the word. What do you think people mean? It's a mean? made up word. What, what do people mean by racism to you? It's a made up word by the children of the lie. Uh -huh. In order to control and manipulate, I gotta ask you about. <laughs> okay, I when just, we were I growing up, yeah. when black people were decent people, yeah, they said that was good and bad in all races. Uh -huh. Treat people the way you would like to be treated. Uh -huh. Whites taught their kids the same thing, sure. and as a result, the people got along well. It was the government that had the law there to divide as far as freely living where you want. Mm -hmm. But the blacks and the whites got yeah. along. That's why the white people died to help get the laws changed. They sacrificed their lives. It wasn't the people, it was the government. Yeah, but I is, gotta this, ask you about the I great don't no, I have one more <laughs> point to say about that. Um, I still miss my ex-girlfriend, and it's because I've romanticized the past. No, you if miss I were it to, because if, you're emotional. If I were to go it's back true, to it. true, you are emotional. If I were to go back to it, I would realize all the same reasons that we broke up in the first place. I think you romanticize the past no. in a way that I is I know you inaccurate. guys don't want to believe it, but you've been lied to. I don't know what. And you keep going. You keep going back lie, to this. The lie. Is. What's the lie? That black was so bad off back then, and that because of Jim Crow laws, I don't, blacks I think, were being hung, hung from so trees. Did, so were blacks ever enslaved? And blacks were. Uh, what, 150 years ago? Were they? So that it was real. Nothing to do with uh, what's happening, even when I was growing up. So wait, so wait, just so I understand, just so I understand. Just so I understand. You yeah. do believe? Just, I just this need to get a foundation Kanye for This is why Kanye West okay. doesn't want you to live another 400 years mentally enslaved. Right. So, but wait. So you do agree that we were mentally enslaved at one point? No. But you said that Kanye West is a You're mentally want. enslaved now. So you weren't before. You believe, right. So you were not mentally enslaved before. That's right. So you disagree with Kanye? I do. Okay. Oh well, then we, on that part I do. Oh, so we weren't okay. Because great. blacks are mentally enslaved today. Because and they, but they weren't. They weren't before. They were not. They were physically enslaved. But not mentally years. enslaved. No. So if I have a slave, he he is physically in bondage, but he's also a free thinker. You could be a slave and not be mentally so enslaved. So for sure. Let me do this because I'm tired of that. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. The Great White Hope. What do you think about him? The movie, it's a great movie with James, James, James Earl Jones. I really enjoyed it. I like it. that movie. I also <laughs> like The Great White Hype. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is closer to who our current president is. What you, what's your impression to? of the Oh, this White is Hope. Trump. Oh, you know, <laughs> he's the hope. Oh, no, I don't agree. He's the hope for America <laughs> and for black people. No, no, I, 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 he's a snake I, oil salesman. What's your impression salesman. of him now? He's a snake oil salesman. Give me an example. He, he, he hired as the Secretary of State the former CEO of Exxon, who currently has major investments in Russia uh, but they can't get him through through sanctions. So then they start talking about, oh, we'll figure out a way to make it work, and that's why I'm friends. It's all to make his buddies. I don't understand what you're saying. He's a, he's he is going to do his best to make money for him and his homies, and then he's he passed a tax plan that has very short profits. You've been and then, listening to Nancy Pelosi. I and then tell. after five years, fake news. The, oh, but so you haven't given me anything that. I, this I, I don't has done. Okay, I think so he's when divided he divided this country so in he, an amazing way. Yeah, he's he, divided the country. Absolutely. In what way? It, the, the way he targets people. I agree way, with you on that. He's the biggest narcissist. He, what he has ever done, 
He has divided the good from the evil. There's evil so people? So you see the evil liberals, the liberal media, mm -hmm. the Democrats, the writers, they all have a hissy fits, yeah. while the good folks are supporting the president. So I agree he's divided the good for it. He reminded me of Jesus. I came to divide right. the good from the evil. So I agree with you. Yeah, I don't think we do, but that's, if, if you want to keep going in your topics, we can do that. What has he? I don't want. I don't want to spend too much time talking about him. He'll be gone soon enough. How do you see the Great White Hope? Well, I don't call him that, but I uh, look. When he ran his campaign in the beginning, he uh, he started off by insulting his opponent's hands. Right. So this is a man who uh, who spoke to the television and gave reference to someone's hands in regards to the size of their genitalia. He responded. He did what now? He responded to the hand. He didn't bring that up. Someone else Sure, so you've got a man uh, who got emotional person, and, and took no. offense to... He's the most emotional of, yeah, of, of presidents Yeah, he's all he is is emotional. He's, 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 okay, to your emotional. example of emotion, he's when, someone who responds because he doesn't have control irrational. Or his, over his feelings, so he no, becomes irrational. You're supposed to respond to the children of the lie. He's and both, but he's not responding to the children of the lie. Is that like yeah. the children of the corn? Is it the same kind of thing? I think it's maybe the sequel. Oh, cool. I didn't see the first one. <laughs> what would you say? <laughs> the children of the lie. You keep saying the children of the lie, and I don't... I'm talking about the liberal know. media. But he was, the he was, but he was talking to party, someone who wasn't the liberal Trumpers media. And he the was, right over so how many hours of Fox do you watch per day? None. Maybe one. Okay. That's a lot. Yeah, you go show. deeper than that. So what do you mean? Like, where do you get your, your, your news from? I, I, everywhere. He I, is the I, news. I am the news. He is the okay. news. Okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> You've never read the New York Times, Are you happy Times, with correct? anything that the president has done thus far? Um, hmm. Am I happy with anything he's done? You know what he has done is he's made it very clear of, of who is, um, He's made bigotry much more, much more obvious, which I do appreciate. I mean, he's definitely united people in regards to er, uh, half. Uh, if if Hillary was in office, uh, we wouldn't know any who any of the cabinet members were because right. we would just be trusting it. In, because in, he's so emotional and so irrational, like, with everybody his emotions, is so deeply He calls involved. everyone out, and you get to see everyone's stuff right there in the open. <laughs> I'm it's, loving that. It's a great, it's a great show, yeah. and and uh, and I think he's exposing. Uh, he exposes himself all the time, so it's kind of like, oh my, he's like a wealth of of awful madness. Uh, yes, madness in the term of how, I guess how you define man, which is madness not how or I def madness. Madness. Man. Man. Oh, I thought you said madness. No, and no, I thought he we said, were finally going to get on board. Have you ever together. seen a man like President Trump? Before? Never. In I my hope life. I will never see another like him. Have you ever seen a man no. like him? Uh, the closest I can come is... On The is Simpsons. The I Sim saw that. Yeah. yeah. Um, Cartoon characters. But yeah, no. I mean, the only person who comes close is Roy Cohn, his, his predecessor, his, his mentor, who is one of the most diabolical, evil real estate people in New York. I mean, um, Trump makes Bush look amazing, like, which well, was I a just, hard thing to do. This. Like, I respect conservative um, values. Has the I don't... done anything that you think is good since being in office? I mean, besides uniting everybody against him, I mean, creating... Everybody some, not united. A lot, of, a lot of people are. But not everybody. No. Uh, he is uh, meeting with uh, Little Rocket Man next month. Kim Jong-un? Right. Yeah, we'll see and what comes what to this. What do you think this. of that? I mean, this is... <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I mean, it's interesting. I don't, I don't know how much of it I put into his, you know, how much of it is about the president's bullying versus... The fact that Kim Jong Un's nuclear uh, missile launches are not succeeding, and so now he finds himself in a corner. He brought home three Americans who were in sure. over there. But we don't know and what he again, said or did to again, get this that is, going. Again, again, there was certain timing that occurred. Now, if this turns out to be something, it could be like Nixon's, you know, uh, arrival in China. It could be something that proves to be a positive example. My opinion is. Kim Jong-un was talking a big game when he thought his missiles were working. They're not working now. Because we're out of time, give me short, quick answers. Um, are Latinos in America mentally enslaved in the way that the blacks are mentally enslaved in America? Not all blacks, but most. I think, I think white people are enslaved well, I'm only mentally. about the antenna. I uh, think Latinos. all Americans are struggling with How certain How about the constructs. Latinos? Are they mentally enslaved? I think Latinos, more than anybody, are not. 
There have not been two enslaved. No. And do you agree with Kanye West that blacks are, most blacks are mentally enslaved? Do I agree with Kanye West that most blacks are mentally enslaved? In America. Um, I think that Americans are mentally enslaved. How about enslaved. most blacks? No. Well, I think that if we are all are Americans, then I guess by by uh, logic of the uh, answer. How about most blacks? Well, I don't know. I don't know most blacks. So, so you know. don't know if, if most blacks are mentally enslaved? I don't think that most blacks are mentally enslaved. You do not think so? No, okay. I don't think so. Real fast, no. uh, Bill Cosby, do you think that he would treat it fairly in this I'm whole trial? I'm going to pass that one to you. He's got a lot to say on this subject. Fairly? Oh. Fairly. Do I think Bill Cosby is treated fairly? Was it fair? Yeah, I think it was fair. I think it was fair. Considering the number of women who came out against him, I think yes. it was fair. Yeah, I don't think I don't think it was unfair. You believe the women? Do I believe the women? Yes. And how about you? Mm, I believe that probably uh, he definitely did some awful things to to women. You believe it because they said it? I believe it because, because he proof. talked about it in in his stand up. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, what is love? What uh, is love? What is love? Um, it's a connectedness. It's, it's a respect. It's empathy for each other. It's, there, as Dr. King said, there are several different versions of love. Uh, the love that I do my best to share with the world is, is eye contact and, and empathy for each other. And, what, and, and rising tides raise all boats. What is love? I think it's uh, part of a, of a whole. That, part of a whole. Uh, part of, I think it's one part of what you need to uh, be fully human. I don't think it's everything. I think it's one part of it. Amazing. My final question. Did you have fun? Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is a, I love this. <laughs> you kidding me? Have me on again. <laughs> Be back every day. Thanks for watching The Fallen State. We need your continued support. Donate to my nonprofit here. Subscribe and like the videos here. And tell everybody and their mama about the show.